Hi, my name's Tom Mason. I'm a professional wildlife photographer from the UK and Nikon Optics Europe ambassador. And today we're talking about choosing a pair of binoculars for wildlife photography, the benefits of having them out in the field and how to pick a pair that's gonna complement your style of shooting. As a wildlife photographer, a good quality pair of binoculars are an absolute essential. Of course, the camera helps us make those final images, but when scouting out new locations or looking for wildlife out in the field, a really good quality pair of binoculars really aid you when working on location. Now, for some people, they believe that if you're already carrying a longer lens, you don't additionally need a pair of binoculars, but this is far from the case because when you look through binoculars, it's immediately apparent the benefits they provide you uh, when working out in the field. Now, binoculars aid you in the way that they have an increased field of view over a long lens, meaning that at similar magnifications, you can view an environment, but just see more of it at the same time. That's something very useful if you want to spot um, animals coming towards you or just assess different compositions in the way that you might frame up for those final images. In addition, binoculars, of course, give you a binocular option. You can use both eyes that aids your depth perception. Something really useful for finding animals in deep foliage. Um, really good for spotting those subjects that you just can't find um, in a hedgerow or something like that. And finally, the ergonomics of binoculars are extremely comfortable. If you're out for a long scouting session or you know, you're bedded in for a rare subject, Having a pair of binoculars makes it so much easier to keep looking and viewing the environment, reducing the fatigue on your eyes and just helping you to assess the animals that are coming towards you to be prepared and ready for those final shots. So when it comes to selecting a pair of binoculars for wildlife photography, there are a couple of key considerations you're going to want to think about. The first one is that of magnification. Now these are my Nikon Monarch HGs and they're my absolute favourite pair of binoculars for working in the field. The optics are incredible and they're a real joy to use. And they come in two variations in terms of magnification, an 8x and a 10x. Now for many people who just watch wildlife, a 10x is a great optic to go with. It gives you closer up views of the environment and it allows you to get those um, frame filling views of the binoculars to see all the details that nature has to offer. But as a photographer, it's not always the case that I want the maximum magnification. Now for me, one of my favorite lenses to work with as a photographer is that of the 300mm 2.8 VR2. As a long lens, it's kind of on the shorter end of the spectrum that most wildlife photographers use. And for that reason, if I pair it with a really high powered pair of binoculars, I find that it gives me an unrealistic impression of where to position myself when I'm out in the field. And that's why I really like to pair it with an 8x in terms of binoculars. These give me a much better impression of how close I am to my subjects, where I need to position myself in the field to get the images that I'm after, be them frame filling portraits or those more environmental or contextual shots. Now, if I was using a 500mm or a 600mm lens, what I'd probably do is up to that 10 by optic. Again, just for that um, better impression of what I'm going to see through my long lens from my binoculars when working out in the field. Now, in addition to pairing with your lenses, another consideration with magnification um, is that of viewing for a long period of time. For me, I find that if I'm on a long stakeout, an 8x pair of binoculars is much nicer um, for long periods working in the field. They give a more stable view because you don't have that increased magnification, so you get less shake that can make viewing a much more pleasant experience, especially if you're going to be looking at an area for hours at a time. Something that's really useful for when that final tiny little bit of movement might give away the appearance of a subject that you've been waiting absolutely hours to photograph. Something to be considered, especially if you know you're going to be using these for a very long period out in the field. So moving on from the magnification, next consideration when picking a pair of binoculars for wildlife photography is that of the object lens diameter. Now the Nikon Monarch HGs come in two varieties, the 42 mils that are in my hand here, or the 30s that have been round my neck for the start of this video. Now the 42 mil lenses, of course, are larger and aid the light transmission into these binoculars, making these ideally suited to early mornings and late evenings and for low light environments when you're scouting out deer in deep woodland or looking for owls in the nighttime. These are really good for that. The 30s, on the other hand, still feature incredible optics. The ED technology that's found throughout the Nikon range is fantastic and they give great views throughout the day. 
the size and portability of the 30 mils is where they really shine. Um, being so much smaller and lighter, they're fantastic for the traveling photographer. They'll fit in your pocket or the corner of a camera bag that makes them ideal for those who visit multiple locations throughout the year. And these have been all around the world with me. An extra consideration in terms of the size is how they fit your hand. If you have smaller hands, then the 30s could be really nice, whereas those with larger pores might find that the 42s just fit them a little bit better and are more comfortable and ergonomic for long periods of use out in the field. But with those things considered, let's talk a little more about how I use different optics in different locations. So this evening, as the light starts to fade and the combines are whirring in the fields behind me, I'm out close to home looking for one of my favorite local subjects, and that's the little owl. I'm really lucky to have a pair in the paddocks and fields around home. You know, they've been declining over the last few years here in the UK, so it's great to be able to see them right on my doorstep. Now, my optic of choice for this kind of work is that of the Nikon HGs, the 8x42s, because they're a really practical binocular for working in low light conditions, especially if you know you're going to be working right up to that last 15 minutes of the day. The 42mm object lenses let a huge amount of light in, and the sharpness and clarity I get from them is just wonderful, especially when you're trying to pick out a mottled bird, often in you know busy and difficult uh, environments that can be hard to see. You know, when the light gets really low and all you're going to get is the smallest bit of movement to give away their position, being able to really get a good, clear view is something that is really vital for this kind of work. In addition, the 8x42s are great for how I'm working this evening with my 300mm 2.8. The 8x optics give me a good impression of what I'm going to see from my 300mm that's ideal for positioning myself to get those images that I'm after. And of course, as the light starts to fade, sometimes you're not going to get any images, but those spectacular views are something that us wildlife photographers just love to see. And if you're passionate about birds and just getting out there and seeing great wildlife, a really amazing pair of binoculars just makes the experience so much more enjoyable. But right, I better get back to finding these owls and seeing if I can get some pictures. So today is one of those classic English days on the coastline, but I've got a fantastic habitat in front of me. It's expansive in its landscape with a variety of habitats. I've got the coastal sand dunes that are brilliant for smaller birds. You know, your wheat ears, your wind chats, as well as your swallows and sand martins that have been flying through this morning. Out to my side, of course, I've got uh, the expansive shoreline and beach that's great for photographing waders and shorebirds, terns and gulls. Um, there really is a lot out there today. But whilst I'm here, one thing that I do tend to change up is the optic that I'm using. Instead of my classic eight by that I tend to pick for most of my photography, um, I'm using a 10 by optic today. Um, these are the Monarch uh, 10 by 42 uh, HGs, um, and they're brilliant for this kind of work. Where I'm looking over a wide landscape, the extra magnification means that I can pick out birds at a distance. Uh, small birds that are up on the edge, like a, uh, there's actually a kestrel off in the distance over there. It means that I can just pick things out further away. That allows me to work and focus on how I'm going to get close, especially when some of these creatures can be a lot more flighty than the woodland species. It also gives me a chance to see which ways um, groups of birds are moving. If they're moving down the coast, it gives me the opportunity to get in front of them as they work their way towards me. It makes my life a lot easier as a photographer because I can just wait for the birds to walk straight towards me, meaning they're less spooked by my presence because I'm not approaching them, meaning they're likely to come a lot closer uh, to give me those intimate views for some great uh, photographic opportunities. In addition to uh, the fact that it gives me that extended viewing reach, I'm using the 10 bys because it also pairs nicely with the 500mm that I'm using today. 
The 500 is just great for picking out smaller birds or shorebirds, especially when you want that extended working distance. Um, this is the 500mm uh, 5.6pf. That's a great lightweight lens, uh, especially handy when you want to handhold and crawl along the beach uh, to get those perfect images. But from here, what I can see um, as the rain is starting to fall, and of course, was a classic English seaside, um, is there's a load of birds out on the shore and they're kind of working their way down. There's a group of sandlings over there as well as some uh, terns flying along the coast. So what I'm probably gonna try and do is get myself down onto that edge and work my way into a position where hopefully we'll get some images later on this afternoon if the rain decides to let up and give me some fantastic light. But right, let's go and see what we can find. When it comes to traveling, size and weight are paramount as a photographer. So my compact 30mm Nikon Monarch HGs are my go-to for overseas assignments. Easily fitting into a camera bag or my pocket, they provide fantastic options for location scouting and enjoying wildlife sightings on the go. The rugged nature of the build easily deals with the daily battering whilst working on assignments. Jumping between transports and varied conditions, they've never missed a beat. Providing me with stunning optical clarity, they allow me to quickly find wildlife in the field, assess new locations for photographic potential, and plan my positions for image making. Always the first thing I put around my neck when heading out, they're an essential tool in my travel camera bag. With their small size and low weight, they never get in the way whilst exploring new places, allowing me to focus on the photography from dawn until dusk. So as you can tell, a pair of binoculars are a fantastic tool for wildlife photographers working out on location. The combination between magnification, field of view and comfort for long-term viewing hours make them an absolute essential for tracking down wildlife efficiently. For myself, a pair of Nikon Monarch HGs are always in my kit bag. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. I'll select the model depending on the location that I'm heading to, be it the 42mm if I want better low light performance, a 10 by optic if it's going to be paired with a 500mm lens, or of course my 30mm if I'm heading out and traveling overseas where the compact nature comes into its own. One thing is for sure that no matter where I am, I will always have a pair of these right by my side.